right now on No More Download. It's the Dino Shore Weekend. The biggest lesbian event in the country. It's the biggest, the most popular, the largest lesbian party in the world. But why do some say it excludes women of color? After we wrote uh, a little blurb about who we are and what we do, uh, the restaurant canceled our contract. Is there discrimination at the diner? I'm Janor McDuffie. We'll take a closer look. Then. We started in Durham and Atlanta and New York City and in Greensboro, North Carolina. These two women are on a mission. They're traveling coast to coast. But for what? We got stopped by a police officer. He seemed to really not be able to believe that we were. I'm Kendall Hogan, and what is the Queer Mobile Homecoming Project? Then, Daryl Stevens in the hot seat. And he said, well, you know, you can't be a black actor and come out of the closet. It's just, it's, a, it's suicide. His co-star Doug Spearman asking the tough questions. Aren't you tired of hearing that? The stars of Noah's Ark go one-on-one -on -one and answer the question, will the show ever return to television? And... I can't even believe I'm doing this. What is our girl Janora up to now? But I'm doing it, and I'm doing it to save lives. It's all straight ahead on No More Download. How you doing? I'm Sharif Atkins, and you're watching No More Download TV. It is billed as the biggest lesbian party in the world, also called Dinah Shore Weekend. And we're right here in the mix. Hey everybody, I'm Janora McDuffie. I'm Kendall Hogan, trying not to get scorched here in the desert heat in beautiful no. Palm Springs, California. Yeah. We gotta find a pool soon. You read my mind, Kendall. I'm talking about it, all right? Well, in the meantime, we're here on the main drag called Palm Canyon Drive, where people from all over the world have come for this fun-filled party weekend. But on a serious note, some members of the African-American lesbian community don't feel so welcomed here at the diner. Mm -hmm. Why? Mark Noble investigates. Our race has always been an important and integral part of who we are. And I think at places like um, events like the Dinah Shore Weekend, sometimes ethnicity and race and other statuses get overlooked. It's a matter of color and pride. As Dinah Shore Weekend jumped off in April, in the midst of the mostly white clientele enjoying various events, there are the lesbians of color who take the celebration and their cultures into their own hands. There hasn't been much of a place for women of color at the Dinah Show Weekend in Palm Springs. But Chocolate and Wine Upscale Events hopes to bring more activities, more ways to celebrate who we are as um, black and Latina and Asian women who are gay. Dinah Shore Weekend was named such after 1970s icon and entertainer Dinah Shore. How's this? That seems good. A supporter yeah, of the black community, as this YouTube video shows, it was not uncommon to see Shore sharing the stage with the likes of Pearl Bailey, Ella Fitzgerald, and Michael Jackson during the run of the Dinah Shore show. Besides entertaining people, Shore, who was heterosexual, was also an avid golfer starting the Dinah Shore Invitational Weekend for women. It also happened to attract a strong lesbian crowd, the weekend eventually becoming named for what it is today. And while the clientele is mostly Caucasian, there is a presence, albeit small, of lesbians of color who try to carve out their own space, in some cases, with difficulty. According to the chocolate and wine promoters, that was the case when they tried to secure space at the exclusive Spencer's Restaurant and Tennis Club. We paid our deposits, we, had, we signed our contracts, the staff at Spencer's said they were happy to have us. After we wrote uh, a little blurb about who we are and what we do, we were notified through email that the contract was canceled. And it was very disappointing because so many women were looking forward to the event. We contacted Spencer's who agreed to the miscommunication and have since worked with the promoters to make the situation right. But the damage had already been done. 
through a wisely thought out social media blitz about perceived injustice and claims of discrimination. That effort proved effective. We had to speak for all the times that we're turned away at the door and we never know exactly what it is. Is it our gender presentation? Is it our race? Is it how we spoke? Is it we, we laugh too loudly? Are we too dark? Is our hair not the right way? And we said we had to stand up for ourselves and for the women that we represent. And we had to be brave and do that. And um, I think in doing that, it helped the community. It not only helped the community, but served as a bridge to educate, particularly the Spencer's owner, who upon learning of the mishap, took steps to not only find alternative space and offer assistance to the group, but went in with eyes open and sensitivity. We thought that the owner of Spencer's made a sincere effort to address some of the issues that maybe he didn't know existed. Uh, you know, I don't think he really knew much about women of color, lesbians of color, before this experience. And uh, I, I'd, honest, I'd honestly say that he tried to remedy the situation. I'm just glad that they worked it out and they got it together where we can all come together as one. We have money to spend too, you know. We, we, we will show up, as you see, we will show up in numbers if you give us an, an avenue, an opportunity, something to be here for. I think, you know, when we have our weekend, they should put something up that says, hey, all colors welcome, all people welcome, just some overt statement that says, we want you here. Come on in. Reporting in Palm Springs for No More Down Low, Mark Noble. Thank you so much, Mark. I am now here with the one and only fabulous Marquita Thomas. She is the promoter here in Palm Springs. That's the only one throwing a pool party specifically catering to the women of color. How you doing, Marquita? I'm fantastic. All right. Thank you so much for having us here today. I've been having a good time. Good, 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 good. Now, what made you decide to throw something specifically for the women of color? Uh, well, Dinah Shore is the largest lesbian weekend on earth, and, you know, I felt like there should be specifically a space for women of color. Some of the larger promoters don't necessarily outreach to our community, so I figured we need to create our own space. All right, thank you so much, Marquita, for everything, and especially for what you do in the community. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right, back to you, Kendall. All right, Janor. So, if I said queer mobile homecoming project, would you know what I was talking about? We didn't need that until we met Julia and Alexis, a young couple whose passion for the future of the feminist lesbian movement is so strong, they go the great lengths to document its past. Here's Lorencia Dandridge. We started in Durham and Atlanta. And New York City. Been to Greensboro, North Carolina. We've been Raleigh, to North Carolina. Detroit, Michigan. If you could rack up frequent flyer miles for driving, then Alexis Gums and Julia Wallace could fly free for life. Jacksonville, Florida, Tallahassee. You see, they are on a unique cross-country journey. Their destination, history, documenting the tales and life stories of black lesbian elders. They call it the Queer Mobile Homecoming, an experimental archive project. And then I said, now you have to marry me. <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed just like that. <laughs> we feel that alignment, we feel that reflection with them and want to be connected with them and learn, learn about what they did do to be themselves and to sustain themselves when it really wasn't the thing to do. Their truck began back in June of 2010 in this 1988 Winnebago Lachero, affectionately called Sojourner. And while there have been a few bumps in the road. Somebody broke into Sojourner to steal the radio and Julia actually discovered the person while they were still in the RV. When they got to Mississippi, they encountered a major roadblock. We got stopped by a police officer who um, Supposedly for following distance, but when he asked us, you know, what we were doing and, you know, how do we get this RV, he seemed to really not be able to believe that we were traveling the country interviewing black queer feminist elders for a documentary project. He separated us for questioning, he called in backup, but we feel like we left the situation affirmed in the fact that this is what we're doing, it's powerful, we have the energy of our whole community with us, and we feel like we left an impact on him to understand that this is something that's possible. 
And what's impossible is for the family to lose track of their whereabouts. They are tracking us on Google Latitude. My mom is like, she has on her computer, she checks where we are, it's linked to my phone. So what I'm gonna ask is that we actually do this one by one. On the end of each stretch of the journey, Alexis and Julia make these special pit stops, like this one, where they share their findings with students from the University of Southern Cal. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Apache Junction, Arizona. <laughs> Now LA, we want everybody to know that they are surrounded by the legacy of generations of queer black brilliance who are excitingly opening their hearts to us and it's a miraculous thing that cannot be stopped. And neither can the Queer Mobile Homecoming Project. For No More Download, this is Lorencia Dandridge. Alexis and Julia hope to compile all their stories and documentation to a full-length feature film to be released in 2013. To bring them to your community, go to mobilehomecoming.org. I cannot wait to see that film. Yeah, me too, Kendall. All right, so as we continue to enjoy the festivities here at Dinosaur, I'm going to tell everybody what's coming up next. How about we've got the stars of the infamous Noah's Ark, Daryl yeah. Stevens and Doug Spearman as they go one-on-one. -on -one. It is a No More Download exclusive, so stay tuned. Guess what my co-host Norm McDuffie is up to now and why she's about to push herself to the ultimate challenge. That's right. You don't want to miss it. Oh boy, stay tuned. We'll be right back. about your music and I was listening to your one of your ballads and yeah. did I or did I not hear part of Romeo's balcony speech in that song? Well, yeah, the song is called Envious Moon, which is the right. based on the speech. And the first line is Romeo is banished. Uh -huh. Felt for some reason appropriate to root it in this sort of mm -hmm. classic language of love. Yeah. You are the romantic, aren't you? <laughs> I am a, I am a romantic. Do you think the, that America is ready for an openly gay recording artist, pop artist? I don't know what America is, I don't know that America knows what America is ready for. Right. I think that, you know, I was talking to somebody last night at, at the, uh, the Fusion event and he was, he was an agent slash manager, lawyer, and he was talking to me and another actor and he said, well, you know, you can't be a black actor and come out of the closet. It's just it's suicide. Aren't you tired of hearing that? And he said to me, not not to me, but in front of me, knowing yeah. who I was, and and I thought, you know, he's to some extent he's right. Yes. But if I had not done it, and if I don't keep working on sharing stories, how would we know? Right. No, there's a whole lot of internet traffic right now about bringing back Noah's Ark, and yeah. there's the yeah. fan page on Facebook. What do you think the likelihood actually is, and are you? Um, are you interested in playing in examining Noah again? I love that the fans want to see the show, and I love that that they feel so connected to the characters. But it's it's just, you know, part of my what we were just talking about. Part of my transition will have to be letting that character go. I remember a conversation we had, uh, me, you, Christian, and Rodney, when we were shooting at the swap meet. Yeah. At lunch, and I remember thinking we were all talking about like, suppose this is it. Suppose this is the one big thing. And to an extent, it very well may be. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's I'm, like I said, I'm putting out other stuff, I'm working on other things, but acting has been a very interesting process since that show. You know, you and I are open about our sexuality. That also kind of keeps us in a box that people aren't necessarily looking to open on a regular basis. So we, it's been, 
the acting part of this journey has been really interesting. When people see you on TV from their living rooms, they think that you are that person. They don't understand that you're not that person. They, you become their friend because mm -hmm. they visit you at home. I love Noah. I think he's a he's an amazing guy. Uh, I love what he represented for black gay men and and the challenge, the way he challenged black gay men to look at themselves. But I also feel like I played him a little close to myself, a little, I, I internalized him in ways that I think make it challenging for people to see me do anything else. I just took him very much to heart. After that aired, people were really expecting me to just be that guy for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I got into relationships where people were expecting me to be that guy. It was, it was all very sort of eye-opening in, 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 in the ways that people, like I said, just perceive you on TV. What do you think your common denominator is about the guys that you've chosen to go out with? And like, what do you look for? You know what, I'm, I'm not dating right now because I think I'm, I'm in a space where I'm sort of reevaluating all that. I think for a long time it was, I want somebody who I uh, like spending time with, who's funny, who's personable, who's kind, and who shares my views on monogamy and uh, understands what it, what it means to live with integrity and be in a relationship. And we're not gonna leave you hanging like that. So if you wanna see a little bit more of Daryl and Doug on our No More Download website, go to the Episodes tab and click on the bonus video feature. Oh, and by the way, Doug just landed the role of administrator of Pine Valley Hospital on All My Children. Congratulations, Doug. Let's see what Kendall's up to. Kendall? All right, the moment you've all been waiting for. My co-host, Janora, is about to put herself to a once-in-a-lifetime challenge. But the good thing about it, it's all for a great cause. This is the hardest thing I've ever done in my whole life. I can't even believe I'm doing this. But I'm doing it, and I'm doing it to save lives. I have signed up to ride in the AIDS Life Cycle Ride 10. What that is, it is a ride from the city of San Francisco all the way to the city of Los Angeles. That's 525 miles, I think about 60 miles a day over the course of seven days. Crazy. All of it is to benefit HIV and AIDS, um, paying for treatment, spreading awareness, and doing the show a couple months ago, the one where we focus on HIV and AIDS, I realized that we were missing from the fight. Not necessarily black women when you get with a group of black folks, but on a grand scheme of things. For example, this ride, looking at photos, we're missing. But African American women are being affected in disproportionate amounts. I need to be part of the solution. Okay. I'm ready to go. This is the first day of my training. I'm going to do this for the next couple months as I prepare to make that trek from San Francisco to LA. Crazy, right? No excuses. Let's go. like to be part of the solution and like to ride with me, then go to the No More Download website, click on the resources link, and there you will find the link to the official AIDS Lifecycle website where you can click on that and sponsor me. Any and every donation, no matter how small, will help. So thank you so much. It is appreciated and I look forward to you joining me on this journey as I train and make that ride to be part again of the solution. 
Between now and June, we'll keep you updated on Janora's training. And of course, we'll have every pedal stroke as she journeys from San Francisco to Los Angeles. So stay tuned for that. You ready, champ? Not yet, but I will be. Oh, I have no doubt she will be ready. That's our show for today. Here's what's up on our next show. On the next No More Down Low. What do I know? <laughs> I know a lot. <laughs> a popular New York hip hop DJ gets arrested for allegedly having sex in a car with a transgender. So why are the heavyweights of hip hop suddenly silent? It's very naive for a lot of people to think that no gay man is in hip hop or woman. All that and more on the next edition of our show. And don't forget, if you want to help my girl out here, just click on our resources link and make a pledge. Help her out. That's right. Help us sister out and all for worthy calls. That's the most important part. Actually, we got one more thing I want to talk about. I want to congratulate you on being featured in Advocate Magazine's 40 Under 40. It's quite an accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really proud and honored and humbled to be recognized. I'm happy to just be standing here next to her. I know. <laughs> well, from sunny Palm Springs, California, reminding you to spread love and not hate, I'm Janora McDuffie. I'm Kendall Hogan. We'll see you next time. 40 Under 40, huh? Wow. You're on fire. <laughs>